So we're going to take a look now at how to solve equations with rational expressions and basically remembering that rational just means fractions. So, well, kind of, but basically. Um, so basically the idea is, you know, how do I solve something that looks like, I don't know, like this. I don't know why I did that. How about that equals, I don't know. All right. Now, there's all kinds of ways to do this. Um, let me show you the long way, because I'm a teacher, and I feel necessary to um, teach you everything, even if it's not like the fastest way to do something. So the long way to do this would be to say, I'm going to get a common denominator for everybody. So um, the common denominator for all these fractions is going to need to be 6. Right Now, this guy's already 5, 6, so this is OK. Um, so I can multiply the top and the bottom of here by 3 to get to 6. So that's going to give me 3x. Multiply the top and the bottom here by 2. That will give me 2, 6. Now let's see. I have 3x plus 5 over 6 equals 2 over 6. And so since these are both over 6, yeah, see, um, this is actually not the best way to solve this problem. And I'm trying to show that to you. And then I can subtract 5 from both sides and I'll get this, so don't, don't give up on me yet, I swear. Um, I'm going to get to something useful. I'm just going to show you how I always insisted on solving these when I was a young person just getting started. Um, I always insisted on doing this, and I don't know why. Probably because some teacher told me how to do it this way, and that's how I did it forever and ever. This is just absolutely awful, so <laughs> please don't ever solve it that way again. Let me show you a much faster way to solve this. Now, it actually is going to use the same kind of brain power, but instead of saying, OK, I need to get everything in terms of 6, really the best thing to do is to recognize that your GCD is 6, greatest or LCD or whatever it is you're called, the, the thingy that you would normally make them all to be the same fraction. Um, instead of making all those fractions divided by 6, we could multiply the entire equation by 6. Remember, you can do anything to an equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides. And why this is awesome is I can take the 6 and distribute it. So I've got 6 times x over 2 plus 6 times 5 6 equals 6 times 1 third. Got it? Now, I can see that the 6 and the 2 are going to cancel out to give me a 3. So that's 3x plus the 6s cancel out to give me 5. And then these cancel out here to give me a 2. So I have 3x plus 5 equals 2. So you see I've actually got the same thing both ways. I just did it faster over here. This is much faster. The idea is anytime you see a fraction, you want to get rid of it as quickly as possible because fractions are painful and nobody likes to deal with them, including me. And I'm totally competent. I just still don't want to do it. So um, now we're going to go in here and minus 5 on both sides. And that will give us the same thing we had before. Divide by 3. And we get do 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 the junk time. We get the same answer. All right? So basically, the whole strategy on solving rational expressions, equations with rational expressions, is to get rid of the fraction as quickly as possible by multiplying by whatever is necessary to do so. So we got that. Let's give you another example to play with. Um, let's try. Let's try one half. Let me make it prettier. Um, what am I doing? Am I really getting this involved in where my fraction line goes? Okay. One half plus eight over three x equals one over six x. Okay. Now here's the same kind of thing, but you need to watch out. There's actually a trick to this problem. You see here? See how there's an x on the bottom? That means that whenever I get my final answer. I need to check. Specifically, I need to check for a divide by 0. Okay? So let's pretend I solve this problem and I get x equals 0. If I plug in x equals 0 here, I get 1 over 6 times 0, which is 1 over 0, which is undefined. Come here. There we go. Undefined. So that's not really going to happen in this example, but it's just one of those things that anytime you see an x on the bottom of the equation, you always have to remember that once you get your final answer, 
that you need to check for divide by zero. Okay? I don't think this example is going to do it, but I think I'll give you mine in a minute. Right. Nonetheless, so every time I see an X on the bottom, I just immediately go down to the bottom of the page and write, hey, don't forget to check this out. All right, so this problem, we're going to want to multiply by um, 6X, right? Because if I multiply both sides by 6X, that'll pull everything out of the bottom. And the worst thing that happens is if you pick a number that's too small, you'll have to do it again. If you pick a number too big, Actually, nothing bad happens when picking a number too big. Um, so don't too stress out too much about this. Because um, picking the wrong number isn't really the end of the world. So 6x times a half. And you don't have to write this out. I'm just writing it out because I'm a teacher. That's what we do. Um, 6x times 1 over 6x. So let's see. These cancel out and give me 3. So I've got 3x plus the x's are going to cancel, the 3 and the 6 are going to come to 2, so 2 times 8 is 16, and that's going to equal, those cancel out, and I'm all only left with a 1, 1. Alright, subtract 16 from both sides, and divide by 3, and that'll give me negative 5. Woot. Now I'm going to check for divide by 0. If I stick a negative 5 up there, is, is that going to be a problem? Let's see. 8 over 3 times negative 5, that's just going to be 8 over negative 15. This is okay. 1 over 6 times negative 5 is 1 over negative 30. Again, that's okay. Um, the whole point, though, is I just don't want to have to be dividing by 0, so I'm okay. So my answer is x equals negative 5. Got it? Now, I'm going to give you a couple of problems that you should go work on your own and then come back and work them or look at me solve them. Because again, that's how you're going to know if you got this right, is if you can actually go work them out by yourself. So, let's try x minus 4 over 2 um, minus x minus 3 over 9. Well, let's say I equals 5 over 18. And then let's also do um, number two. Let's try three. This is kind of a little bit harder. Minus six over x equals x plus eight. All right. So I recommend you pause the video and try to solve these. And then if it makes sense, great. Come back and make sure you get the right answer. Otherwise, if you get stuck, then come back and. Um, see where you got stuck, okay? So we'll pretend you did that. Now, let's move this guy out of the way. Okay, my number one. Ah, come back. There we go. All right, so looking at this, hopefully you realize that the common denominator that you would want to multiply by would be 18. If I multiply both sides by an 18, that will get rid of the fractional parts of this equation. So 18 times x minus 4 over 2 minus 18 times x minus 3 over 9 equals 18 times 5 over 18. And again, you don't have to write this out, and I'm probably going to stop doing it eventually. Um, I'm just doing it for funsies for the moment. So um, 18 divided by 2 is 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2. 18 divided by 18 is just going to cross. So I've got 9. Now make sure you use your parentheses. It's going to be 9 times x minus 4. Minus 2 times x minus 3. And that needs to equal 5. Next step, distribute the 9 across. And distribute the negative 2 across. Be careful doing this because this is where a lot of mistakes can happen. So I've got 9x minus 36 minus 2x plus 6 equals 5. Now again, if it feels like I'm going fast, I'm not trying to go fast or saying you need to go this fast. I just know that you have a pause button. So if you get stuck on something, just pause it. That's why whatever video exists. So you can pause things and learn it on your own and then come back and figure it out. So if I feel like I'm going a little fast, I'm not going specifically fast um, to be crazy, but because I know that you can pause it and come back and look at it again. Okay, so 
Here, make sure that whenever you multiply by a negative 2, you multiply negative 2 times negative 3 gives you a positive 6. Okay, so make sure you got your signs right there. Now I'm going to combine like terms to get 7x minus 30 plus 5. Add 30 to both sides. Divide by 7. And end up with x equals 5. And that's my answer. Sweet? Good. Uh, let's try the other one, see how you did on that one. Now, on this one, I see that I divide by x, so I need to come down here and remind myself to check for you divide by 0. Okay. Now, what I can multiply this entire equation by is simply x. This might look a little weird initially, but it's um, the same strategy that you're going to use to solve this as you solve the other ones. So distribute the x across both of these and distribute the x across both of these. Okay. So now I'm just going to start writing it out. 3x minus, the x's cancel out and that gives me 6. 3x minus 6 equals x squared plus 8x. Remember, the whole point of algebra is to take a problem that you don't know how to solve and turn it into something that you do know how to solve. So um, this looks like it's going to be something related to a quadratic equation. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving everything to one side of the equation. And I'm just going to write this as let's see, that. And since I know I can switch the side of the equation that it's on, blah. Like that. Good. Now, since I have three terms, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use a, a reverse FOIL method. And because I've got an awesome factoring now, I can do this. Um, if this is completely foreign to you, you probably need to go back and watch some of the other videos on how to do some factoring and how to solve systems of equations, not systems of equations, how to solve um, algebraic equations with factoring. So hopefully this should be pretty familiar, stuff that you can do all semester or however it is you're taking this class. Um, so now I've got my answers. I want to check for divide by zero. So if I put... 6 over negative 2, that's going to be okay. If I put 6 over negative 3, that's also going to be okay. I'm not going to be dividing by 0. So that means that my solution, I've actually got 2. Our x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. 